Yeah, it is what it is. All right, and you're not thinking about anything right now? Nope. All right, this is a fun one, Brooks Kepka. Brooks is maybe like too cool for this program. This is a show for golf nerds, by golf nerds. Brooks isn't really that way. What does he think about when he's hitting balls before a round? I don't know, genuinely don't. And I don't know if he's gonna let us into that process either, but I'm excited to try to get there with him. So, Brooks Kepka, warming up. Next up on the tee, five-time major champion, Mr. Brooks Stepka. What's going on? Brooks, thanks for warming up with yeah, us. Yeah, of course. Um, I want you to kind of pretend it's a major championship Sunday. It really feels like one here, as you tell. Um, how, how, how far before the round are you getting onto the drive? Uh, come on the driving range probably about 45, 50 minutes before my tee time. Okay. Um, get to the course about an hour and a half. Just do a little physio work and then I actually go to the putting green first. So usually start there, putt for a little bit and then come to the range. You've already done that in your mind here. And then you come over, what club do you start with? I always start with 56. All right. So uh, you want to yeah. hit a couple 56s for yeah. us? What are you thinking about when you're making Honestly, your first swings of the day? You're not going to like this answer, but I don't think of anything. It's so, all, <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Like, yeah. How do you, I mean, every golfer knows you can warm up and have the worst warm up of your career and go out and go play great. Like this year, the PGA. Saturday, Sunday was the worst warm up I've had in a long time. Seriously, what, like, what does it feel like? Bad contact? You don't know where the club is? Like, yeah, you just don't, you're like, wow, this, those shots are really, really poor. Like the, the flights on them, you know, I'm, like I'm a fader of the ball, so they might be drawn. They were, the divots were steep. It just, it wasn't good. But yeah. at the same time, it really doesn't matter. It's just a warm up session. So I feel good. Shouldn't have an issue with it. That was kind of, I think Tiger had some line about that. Like it, it was like at the end of a warm up, the question is like, did you warm up? And that's kind of it. So I just use it as a place to just go hit a few balls and make sure I'm loose. Um, all right, hit us one more here. And, and how far are you hitting these? Uh, I just go out feel. I just go out feel. Uh, it's just one of those things. We've got a couple of like stock yardages, but they're all uh, they're all feel based. That's kind of the thing. It's never it's not trying to hit it 100 yards. It's just yeah. gonna have a small, medium and then three quarter and full. And so I just go off those fields and whatever those yardages are, we, we've got those banked in. Is that true when you're on the course too? Like how, how numbers oriented when you're <laughs> dialing in yardages are you? Like it's, if you have an 80 yard shot, nah, what do you think? I'll like take a little bit off. I might open the face just a little bit and maybe throw it up a little bit. Um, I think we've got an 84 yard shot, 56. So I might just open the face a little bit, same swing. Just, be perfect. That's it. All right. What's next in the bag here? So I'm an odd guy. I go nine, seven, five, and then every time. Every time. I honestly, you're gonna laugh. My caddy always he gets driven nuts by this. Uh, all the odd clubs wear out so quick. I was gonna say, your even clubs get lonely. In here. Yeah, they don't. The wear spot on those irons is not as good as, as the other ones. Like even when I'm home practicing, I don't practice with any any evens. So it's the same <laughs> clubs every single time. That way, it's the same thing every time. Just never hitting six iron except in a tournament round. Yeah. Yeah, right. really, that's basically it. All so right, a couple of these for us. I mean, how often are you getting like new, how often do you get a new set of irons as it is? Uh, I usually switch out maybe the twice a year. Okay. It's always the British is a new set. Oh, really? Yep, British is a new set. To get fresh grooves for over there, or what's the? No, it's just, it's kind of the timing, right? I've, I get it. I'll start a new one in the beginning of the year, work, you know, four or five months into them. Yeah. And then by that time you're like, okay, I got to get a new set. So just the groove patterns, and it's honestly just the nine, seven, and five that I could switch out. But um, yeah, it is what it is. All right, and you're not thinking about anything right now. Nope. How about once you're on like the first hole, hitting your approach shot with a nine iron? Are you thinking about anything when you stand over that? No, I just try to make it a reaction sport. Always think about it, right? If you've got all the time in the world, you know, you ball up a piece of paper or whatever, and you just chuck it in the trash can usually yeah, goes in. But if you stand there and you think about it, and the more and more, like you see it, guys do it all the time. You, the extra waggle, you're like, oh boy, this isn't gonna be good. Like you can tell they're uncomfortable. Just make it a reactionary sport. I don't care if it fades, draws, 
as long as it goes close to the pin, like I've hit a million bad shots that just look good. They're crowd pleasers and, and you have no idea that I just miss hit it and get a little lucky. What's the one you get away with the most often, like a little thin or something? Uh, yeah, probably that's, you know, what, it just comes off differently than you expect. Like, yeah, there's, there's always that. I think probably the one, you know, the back pin, you're trying to do something and you just, you know, might tend to pull it, um, you know, trying to take something off of it. I think for me, that's kind of the toughest part. Um, my body ends up slowing down and end up pull drawn a little bit, but that's, yeah. that's just one thing I've always worked on. It's always something. Seven iron. Yep. Work our way up. Um, all right, you're getting to the longer clubs here. If you do have to make an adjustment, like say you say you wanted to hit a fade, like what would you do? You just think fade? Uh, yeah, I just, the only thing I do is every single time I'm religious about it, I make sure I'm lined up the same, okay. grips the same, and that's it. Is everything pretty neutral? Like uh, I line up pretty, well, pretty far left for me. I've yeah, got, yeah. Uh, I fade it. Yeah. So I line up maybe, I forget, like if I look at the target, I know where my feet should be, and then my shoulders should be just slightly left of that. Okay. Um, I'll have my coach Claude or Ricky stand behind me every time, and I, all I care about is the alignment, and that's it. Keep it really simple, man. That's yeah. that's just the way the way it goes for me. I don't. Seems to uh, be working okay so far. It works okay, but yeah, that's the only thing I'm worried about is just my lined up overnight. night. Because then from there, if I'm lined up okay, my shoulders are good, the club face, I'm pretty much going to get in the same spot every time. Right, you can tell if it's open, closed. Yeah. But just the little things, if the basics are the same every time, I swing. I mean, I've done the same swing for, I don't know, 27 years probably yeah. since Has I played the game. changed in meaningful ways over that time? Yeah, because your body changes, right? Like, yeah. whether it be injury, things like that, or just, you know, size difference, you know, skinny back in college, it was like 170 pounds, so a little bigger now, a little fatter now. Yeah. But like, so you just gotta work around stuff like that. But usually it pretty much stays the same. How different do you feel now compared to this time two years ago, I guess, or maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah, a lot different, a lot yeah. different. I don't even notice my knee anymore, so. Really? Yeah, everybody else just brings it up, and I'm like, okay, yeah, but I'm fine now, I'm good. I'm healthy, so I'm happy. How much, like, mental relief is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing. I think it's just, I don't think people really knew how, how bad it was, and then on top of that, your proprioception, anybody that's been hurt, like, you think if you get on like a force plate or something, you can tell like my whole golf swing was just left side loaded. And really? so then you create bad habits. And then, so you're doing that for six months before anybody even notices. Then you're trying to spend the next six months getting out of the bad habits yeah. and you can't really, you don't really know what's what. And so you, you end up wasting a year pretty quickly. And obviously I came back way too soon anyways, so. I guess it sounds like if you are like trying to keep everything simple and kind of neutral and if John is your, your coach for the day, all he wants to do is just tell you if you're lined up correctly, but if lined up being correctly is like off, then that would really scream. Yeah, I just think it's like, I was I was taught right when I was uh, coming up by this guy, uh, Warren Botke, he coached me when I was really young. He was like, it's really simple, PGA, posture, grip and alignment. Posture, I'm pretty much gonna sit, set up the same every time, bend over the same, you know, same distance away from the ball. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about your grip? Like, Grip, I'm an interlock guy, so okay. interlock it. Um, that's me, I've always done it. Uh, it's something just super comfortable. Um, I'm probably kind of on the, maybe the weaker side of it, just because boat at the top, like not DJ boat, but somewhat uh, a little softer than DJ. And, and then from there, it's just turn and burn. Do you think about anything when you look down, like where your thumb is, where your arrow is? No, I was thinking about it. trying to introduce some new thoughts. In yeah, audio, you'll never be able to, but like, it's one of those things where it's, right? I hate to say it, but like some people are born to do it, right? You just, you know, hey, this is what I've done for 20 years. I'm not gonna change it and reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I'm pretty good at it. So just keep going and then just master your craft from there. On weeks when it's off, what's off? Um, you, like, there's so much that goes into the golf, right? Your yeah. body might not feel right. Um, it could be something as stupid as like, <laughs> usually, right? I've got, most people don't have it, but they'll do like alignment sticks or whatever. And I'll make, I might have Claude there and Ricky there and just, you know, you, you'd be shocked at how often the ball position gets up a ball or it's like, hey, move it back a ball. And one of those things are like, it's, it just kind of floats around and all you're trying to do, like it's bowling kind of, right? You, you want to have the bumpers on and just stay in that lane and I'll be all right. Are you good at bowling? Ah, no, no Mookie bets, put it that way. <laughs>
would be sick. All right, so where's your ball? Like, where do you where do you want it? Right in the middle? Yeah, I'm I, I'm right probably yeah, I've got seven. I'm probably a little bit more back than most people. I yeah. would say most people are probably seven iron right in the middle. Mine might be just a hair back, um, but obviously I'm lined up left. So if you look at it from yeah. from that angle, it's a little That's bit like different. Um, but yeah, from there. Just turn your body and go. Just a one yard draw. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. All right, let's see a five iron. Okay, going down. Um, and then how different would your prep be? Like, all right, it's the first round of a live event versus the final round of a major championship. Same thing, there's no difference. I treat everything the same. Um, same warm-up routine, same clubs. Uh, the only difference might be like, hey, if I notice I'm getting a little funky or something's a little bit off, a lot of times, like I spend the first, when I go back to hit balls, I'll spend the first like month, I won't hit anything above a seven iron. I don't even hit driver, don't hit, really? yeah, it's all seven iron and below. Yeah. And like even going into majors like the, my prep for that month before for march my practice i won't barely hit anything above a seven iron just trying to make sure i have full control of the flight full control of the spin the shape everything scoring clubs yeah i guess you could say that um scoring clubs but i also think if you can't hit a seven iron i'm definitely not gonna be able to hit a driver yeah right so if i can master the uh the iron play and that's i think why i've been so so good in the majors So how much do you practice at home? Uh, quite a lot. Yeah. Probably more in than my head, used I used to let on. Well, see, there's a difference, though. In my head, I don't work hard enough. In my head, I'm the laziest guy in the world. But you watch me, you come practice with me, I'm there quite a bit. Yeah. There. Like, I would say I was at Grove right before Augusta last year, and I think even everybody was getting tired of seeing me there. It was, like, all day, every day. And that's really? what I do, yeah. Well, so what... what how in your mind is that not working hard? Because there's still time when you're not working? Yeah, I just always think that, if you always think you're not the hardest working guy, it drives you to work a little bit harder, right? right. If I always think somebody's outworking me, somebody's better than me, somebody's doing this, I have to, I'm playing catch up. Yeah. And so it's like, it motivates me to be like, okay, I've got to get to this point, I've got to get to that. And then even when you win, it's still not good enough. Yeah, there's gotta be something a little screwy about you to get you to- Man, there's five. something wrong with every great athlete, with all the guys that are like the best at, at what they do, there's always something a little bit wrong and they think they're a little, a little crazy. So, yeah. but I guess, I definitely go into that crazy category. What if you have to move the ball? Like, how often do you have to hit a big hook or have to hit a big slice? Not that often. I think a lot of it might come down to more of the yardage. Like, okay, yeah, you're behind a big tree, you gotta slice it or hook it, whatever. It, that happens, right? Yeah. We've all, we practice that, we do that stuff. You know, we practice all funky lies. That stuff that's natural to like a, a tour player versus somebody that just goes in place. But um, a lot of it is basically just yardage based. Like if I'm hitting it three quarters, I'm drawing it. If I'm hitting it full, I'm fading it. It's just one of those things. It's a weird thing. Most people never understand it. Show I don't understand three, it. I just know. Show us a three-quarter here. All right. It's a little baby draw. Yeah. I mean, the setup's still the same, or it still feels the same to me, but I just don't turn as hard. And are you thinking draw there, or you're just thinking swing, and this is just what happens when you swing? I just think my setup is already set for that. Yeah. So I'm already set up for that to happen, and then from there, it's just a matter of speed. Like the... I hate to say it, the harder I swing, so the faster I'm rotating, everything just lines up. Like if you go on track man or something like that, it'll line up and the numbers will be per like perfect for a fade, but it just so happens to move a little slower, three quarters trying to take speed off it. It just, the path happens to kick out a little further right, the face a little more open, so it draws. Do you laugh when you hear how complex other pros make this stuff sound? Yeah. Cause I mean, I look at track man, I look at all the same stuff, yeah. but there's only like a couple numbers I'm looking at. What are you looking at? I'm just looking at a lot of times I won't even bother with the launch. Um, the I look at the attack angle okay. a lot, um, attack angle, the distance, and then, you know, obviously the spin just to make sure because you want to verify. I think you can get buried into 
the track man and just be sitting there at the, and I've done it, I've, I've done it. Guys do it, yeah, hit, and then don't even look at the ball, just straight to the number. Yeah, but you also can get so involved in that and you forget that, man, like, hey, the numbers, just because of where you hit it, if you hit it a little bit off the toe or a little bit off the heel, it can change those numbers quite a bit by like a half degree. Mm -hmm. And so you might think you did something, and, but you're looking at it going like, oh, wow, this is way different than what I actually saw. Like the best track man is your eye. Yeah. So try to make every, I try to make all golf just feel. Because right at the end of the day, if you've been doing something for, like me, 25 plus years, like I kind of, I, I feel like I know what I'm doing. But then again, you know, you also get lost and you got to go back to the basics and then rebuild the foundation and yeah. come back up. And then you need Ricky here and Claude there. Yeah. yeah, but that's all it is. It's all very basic stuff. It's literally every day, it's alignment, ball position. And I still, I mean, I, I can't line up. Like I'm every golfer in the whole wide world. I'm like, Rick, Rick will be like, what are you doing? You're 20 yards left to where you should be. I'm like, my bad, dude. He's like, all right. So then, you know, that whole day might be, hey, we're just going to work on alignment. All right, I got to feel like my feet are right at the pin because usually they might be 20 yards left. And it just, it feels a little weird, but you just got to trust it. And then, okay, all right. Then you start, I start yo-yoing. I go right, and then it's, hey, get left, buddy. Yeah, so. you got to balance it, it out. Yeah. All right, let's see a nice bull one here. It's going to be a one-yard cut. Good night. How far is five iron flying for you? Me, I think probably about just over 210, 212, I think is what the number is. I have to ask Rick. Has that know. fluctuated over time? Like uh, 18 months ago, was that shorter because you were all banged up? It's all it's all pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, my, my golf swing is a lot of upper body. I don't really use my legs that much. Yeah. Um, I don't, you look at like a guy like Tiger or somebody. You shouldn't worry, you should hips. try to get stronger. I should, body. I should. Um, I just can't turn, like my hips don't move as well as everybody else's. You look like a guy like JT who's just full blown gone at, at impact and it's not me. Um, but then again, that works in my favor because stability, I never hit one that's crazy, crazy offline. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's a weird thing I've got. Um, a lot of upper body, but the distance, I don't think, We've got like summer and winter yardages, but it doesn't go further than probably about seven yards. Really? Yeah. So depending on the temp, you kind of know what, uh, what the deal is. When the pressure's on, I mean, I imagine you try to keep everything the same based on everything you've been saying, but it's got to be hard at a certain point, right? In certain circumstances with a certain number of people around you, a certain major championship on the line, something like that. How do you, how do you make sure everything's the same? I think, I mean, I just, I literally, we don't, I don't talk about the golf shot, don't really care about it till I get to the ball, so I'm not worried about it. If it's, hey, it might be behind a tree. All right, well, it's fine. I still got a chance. Um, I never, I don't get nervous because I think when you get nervous, you start thinking about results. Like, if I said throw a ball in that bunker right now, you could, but if I, if it was like life or death, <laughs> you might, you might start to really think it and question what you're doing, but that's what, that's, there's consequences to it, mm -hmm. right? Everybody, when you're playing golf, you already know there's a consequence of the shot. Okay, I might lose this golf tournament if I miss a green or if I make yeah. bogey here. So now then you start to get nervous. But if you really don't think about the consequence, hey, I'm just trying to hit the shot. I've done it a million times. It's there's no but yeah, I mean don't get me wrong, do I get nervous? Yeah, absolutely, like everybody else, but you just try to minimize that. Is there other stuff that you're really good at? Like like fear to play beer pong or uh darts or like other stuff where it's kind of stationary in that same way and involves some like mental toughness cornhole mm -hmm. like are you elite at i'll beat stuff? you in bags all day long really? yeah that's dj he knows the way you even just said that <laughs> you beat uh, dj yeah dj's pretty good he's pretty good too. yeah dj's pretty good at bags yeah but yeah it's fine i just like anything competitive i'm i'm gonna go uh were you always that way yeah it was always that way my brother um my dad never let me win so that's kind of... Uh, when was the first time you beat him at stuff? Oof, I was probably maybe 12, 13. I think the first time at golf. Okay. Um, and it was one of those things. I learned a lesson early on. I got a little cocky and started smiling. And, you know, I get two holes left. I was like, hey, you know, I can get you by a shot or two. And then you had to teach me a lesson early on. Let's see one more of these. And, or, or, yeah, I'll go three. three yeah, we'll go up three. So I always go to three and then, then driver and then work back down. But when I work back down, I go back to seven. It's just my... Straight to seven? Straight to seven, yep. All right, three iron. What's different about this one? Ball position? Uh, just ball position's a little further up. Okay. Um, we've had this club in the bag forever and ain't going anywhere. 
Yeah, do you regrip it? Do you do anything to it? Like when you have to or? Are you talking about like the like actual grip? Well, yeah, like how often are you gonna replace that grip? I don't know, you can look at the shaft, you can see how much it's been in there. The I rest mean, of it looks kind of bad. I change the grips probably three times, four times a year. Okay. Honestly, you laugh, Ricky is the reason I end up changing. I don't change equipment. He'll just make you do it. It'll be one of those things, hey dude, have you felt these grips lately? And you know, you just kind of you get so used to it. You're playing every day, you don't really notice the small changes. Yeah. And he'll be like, I think it's time. Or he'll just go do it himself and I'll notice it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, shafts, I've had this shaft in since 16 maybe, 15, 16, whenever I switched to them. I've had it in there, driver shaft's the same. It's all just, I don't, I don't tinker. I'm not a tinker. I know what works and I like it and I'll go with it. on top of each other they really are that was the same exact ball flight we were talking to phil yesterday and he was talking about how he sort of has like a reservoir of shots in his mind that he can tap back into from you know a shot that he had in 2013 and under pressure in a big tournament and now he can you know like when he sees a shot tomorrow maybe he'll think about that do you do any of that no i don't think about anything i've done in the past because i also think too I like, I like to think i'm better than i was six eight months ago right like with practice or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, well, I can do that better. He might hit it, pick great shots under pressure, hit, you know, I can go think of probably three or four just off the top of my head right now, but I don't go back to that Rolodex probably like he does. Right. What, do you have a favorite shot that you've ever hit? Mm-hmm, 16 at Bell Reef. I remember that. Yeah, I that. The four iron. Me and Ricky, were, I, we weren't arguing, but we were discussing of which club to hit. I think uh, he wanted me to hit something. It's about the only time I've ever gone against what he said in like that situation. Just one of those gut feelings. And he was like, I love it, let's do it. And did it, pulled it off, great shot. And there made the putt. And it was just the moment, the situation, all that stuff involved, it was, the quality of shot was really good too. And does he help you with your mindset and, and keeping you like the way you like to be? Like how, what's his, what's his function in that? Uh, he keeps it light. He's, his big thing with me is, we, we're not gonna talk about golf while we're out there. It's very serious. I mean, a lot of times you probably even see, I don't even, I don't talk much when I'm out there. Um, I'll, I'll talk when I'm off the golf course, but it's it's my job, right? Like anybody that sits behind a desk nine to five, it's, you don't wanna be thinking about something else where you're just thinking about what I gotta do. I'm like, I just gotta get to 18, finish that hole, sign that scorecard, and okay, now I can relax. Yeah. But until that point, uh, he keeps it light. He'll try to joke every once in a while and he knows kind of when to crack the whip and be like, hey man, <laughs> what's the deal today? And then there's yeah. other times where, you know, I can think of, uh, we were in Memphis one year, one, and I hit one in the water, it immediately just turned him. I was like, I'm a bit stiff. He's like, we've been playing golf, we're on the third hole. <laughs> you've had a full warm up and whatever, and you're still stiff. I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it, we'll be fine. We went on a win, but like, just one of those things, like sometimes it's like trust, right? I've got to, he's got to trust that I know what I'm doing and I know what he's doing. And he's the only guy out there that wants me to win besides myself, so. I love the guy, I trust him, trust him to death. Can you get us a big slice just to humor me? Yeah. Just curious what it looks like. All right. What your setup looks like. Ah, I'll try to go right around these trees, how about that? Yeah, 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 that'd be great. So, just open the hell out of my feet. Yep. Just aim way left. Okay. I just feel like the club head never passes my hands. That's the only goal. Got it. Move it back a little bit. Um, and just never let that face rotate. That's pretty sweet. You like doing that? I think it's just more, it's more of like a crowd pleasing thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm never going to really, I might hit that shot once every six months because I'm behind trees or something like that. But it doesn't happen that often. Do you love golf? I love the competition. Yeah. Like, I think the misconception where I didn't fully explain it when everybody says that. Yeah, I love, I love playing golf. I love working, but it also is a job. Like, any athlete can say when they first start playing golf, it's very, it was fun, right? And then you realize that there is a business side of this, there's a competitive side, and it's not just, hey, I'm just gonna go out there and go have some fun today. Like, no, like, I have to go play well. I, I want to, I enjoy the competition, so that's my big thing. Like if you're, what's the most fun part of golf to you? Play, playing in tournaments. Yeah, I was gonna say other than like being in contention, like if you're just at home, I'm awful. I go play, if I go play with my dad and my brother, I mean, I'm lucky to break par. Really? 
Yeah. It's, I can't. Because you can't get in the same place. I can't do it mentally. I can't get in the same place. I can't, like, I can't just hit a golf shot for no reason. Yeah. Like, that's, that's part of why I struggle, too. Like, when I'm practicing for the majors, it's like every, every ball I'm hitting on that range or every putt means something to me might not mean anything to anybody else watching. They would never know. Mm -hmm. But I care so much about that yeah. in, the, in the lead up to it where it's, it's every ball means something. So even with, I mean, you've talked about this a, a ton, obviously, but, but even with like lesser events leading into majors, that's why you just can't quite get there. It's not, it's not that. Like I might be using it for prep for something or I might be, hey, I'm trying to work on something. It's just... The only reason with the majors is just every bit's very, the, the bigger the pressure, like not everybody's built for it. I hate to say that, but there's just certain guys you can pretty much see, I mean, over the last 10 years of who's won the majors, it's pretty, there's a group of guys that are just consistently winning and those are the top guys and they usually do it. Yeah, week in, week out is great. I'd love to do that more often. I'm not saying I don't care about any other event, but it's the whole year. I mean, I spent all of December working for Augusta. So you tell so you tell me I'm five months out and I'm already working on that. So my head's already there, and I'm just trying to count down, use it for, use it yes, use it for prep, but I also do care. Yeah, fascinating. All right, hit it. You're on the fourth hole at Augusta. When maybe would have to be in two for you at this club. Yeah, probably. Yeah, if they want to go all the way back now, yeah. Hit us one. Yeah. Let's see. Put some air under it. And like Sunday, right in the bunker, front bunker. I'm just kidding. All right, take us back down here. What, seven iron? Yeah, we got seven. So. I'm not doing a great job as caddy right now. No, you're all right. So, yeah, so. Get done. I'll work all the way up with driver. Come all the way down. Yeah, yeah. We're Go straight. Hitting, we're skipping driver. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to hit anybody. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, come back down to seven, and then honestly, this is where on the way back down is where I start taking speed off. Everything's just. I don't want to say like full swing, just very fluid on the way up, and then on the way down, it's okay. I want a three quarter. I want to hit a little low shape it the other way shape are you picturing way. shots you're gonna hit specifically on the course like, no. uh, for I just want to feel like hey do I have I have an understanding of hey if I want to knock this down I want to throw some air under it move it right to left left to right I've got it or I feel like hey that everything feels natural today got it all right so for this you're taking a little something off of it take a little something off we'll keep it knock it down and cut it go right there yeah good all right knock down cut seven iron Right up to the green. Yeah. Good enough, but I did what I wanted to do, right? Like, that's my whole thing. As long as it's, go see game of mistakes, man. You're never going to hit every shot perfect. Like, as long as it, it was low, I'm good with it. Nine iron. Go nine. Where's your mind at now? Are you, like, stealing yourself for, okay, there's going to be a lot of people on the first tee. There's, no, too much. No, I, but, like, that's what I want, right? That's what... If you if you want to win a golf tournament, you know there's going to be people around. Yeah. So that's just going to be a constant, and you just deal with it. You get on with it. Um, the only thing is, you know, when everybody starts thinking about pressure, it's the only other thing. Yeah. And does other stuff get to you? Like, if you have a playing partner, or like, God, I don't really, they really don't like playing with this guy. Like, is there a little stuff like that that still gets to you? Or you... No, I don't. No, it's not. It's not that it gets to me. It's. Uh, I think there's some times where, you know, you play with guys you like, you don't like. Sometimes I think it's tougher playing with friends. Mm -hmm. I think that's the toughest one. Yeah. Because they want to chat. with your dad and your brother, then yeah, yeah that makes sense. Well, like, no, I'm saying, like, at a tournament, because yeah. you get your friends and they want to chat. And I'm like, I don't care how good of friends we are, we ain't chatting. Yeah. Like, I'm there to do my work and then we're done. I'll meet you in the locker room, we'll, we'll chat and we'll text, call, whatever, it doesn't matter. But for those four hours, five hours that we're out there, I just want to do what I want to do. I want to go play golf. I'm going to deal with Ricky. We're going to go get a game plan, go figure it out, go attack the golf course. Then we're done. We'll be friends. Yeah. One of the most fascinating friendships in golf from the outside is you and Rory, because it seems, again, from the outside, like you can each kind of borrow something from each other. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Is there anything that you can learn from him or he can learn from you? Yeah, I think especially um, 
when I, when I was first coming up, maybe from 12 to 16, like obviously I don't want to say like idolized, but that would be kind of the wrong word, but I, I looked up to him a little bit. And so, okay, trying to figure out how he goes about it. And that's what I think I did a really good job of is picking guys. Like I picked DJ, GMAC, Rory, because he was playing so good at the time. It's like, okay, grab little things from this guy here, this guy, and make it your own. Yeah. But then our friendship just developed over the years. Um, I've enjoyed playing with him, playing against him. Um, I'm pretty sure he's done the same thing, but it, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. We just, we practice at the same place. You live in the same area. I mean, how could you not? Yeah. All right, what do you got there? One, good, nah. Yeah, I got one more and then we'll pop to the wedge. But yeah, I mean, Rory's a good dude, I've enjoyed it. We've had some good talks and get some laughs out of it because everybody just, all the stuff going on in golf, man. Sometimes you just gotta sit back. Wow. I know, well, I always sort of think that, like from the outside, it's like, ooh, what are they talking about? And then it's like, they're probably talking about like a restaurant. Exactly, that's most of the time when everybody thinks we're sitting there talking about golf or talking about this, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> probably the There's opposite. probably both, right? Like, mm -hmm. I imagine you guys would talk about stuff there's a lot going on. Absolutely, and you know the funny thing is we'll do that when nobody's around. If I want to talk with somebody, I, you know, at the range of Grove, and I know there's nobody else back there, and me and Rory are back there, and I got something I want to say, or he's got something he wants to say to me, he'll pop over and we'll talk. You wouldn't minutes. do it in a practice round at the Masters, yeah. for example? No, but that was just that was just happened to be funny, and everybody yeah. freaked out about it. But like I said, we're all we're all pretty good friends. We're all close, and I think everybody everybody understands everybody's position. Um, you got no ill will, man. They gotta do their job, I gotta do mine. And as long as you're honest, if, if we're honest, I think Rory was honest with me, I was honest with him, and it goes a lot better that way. What's the final shot of your range session? <laughs> it's usually just a little, I take it off. Um, Is it like you have to make the last three before you finish warm ups or something? No, like so I'll finish with these, I'll hit a little wedge, go chip, get yelled at by Pete Cowan because I'm doing something wrong. Um, <laughs> hit a few chips and then go hit putts. And then I'll make whatever, I'll just hit a couple like tap-ins or like three feet and just make a couple of them before I go. And that's the big thing, you see a ball go in the hole, it's like, all right, cool, get it going. And then from there, first tee. Brooks, good luck today. Thanks. A lot of pressure on you. Exactly. Thanks for warming yeah. up with us. Thanks.